Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, we are really excited to be trying something new with our uh, academic success dialogue segment this week, uh, starting this week. And we are going to be featuring a different user of Academia every week. And our first uh, speaker of this segment is going to be Jana Walker from Antelope Valley College. So uh, Jana, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for the invitation. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, as Rachel said, my name is Jana Walker and I work for Antelope Valley College. It's a community college located about 40 miles north of LA in Southern California. And we serve anywhere between 10 and 12,000 students. I'm sure like many of you, our enrollment has seen interesting fluctuations since the beginning of the pandemic. So not exactly sure where we are right now, but um, again, pleasure to be here. When Rachel uh, contacted me, she asked if I could just share a little bit about how we utilized academia, especially in the transition online. So what I will say is that prior to COVID, um, our college was was very much an in-person operation. We were uh, we had very few online classes even. Um, there were a few that were going, but it was it was not by any stretch of the imagination even close to being um, a significant amount of online online classes. So when we transitioned online, uh, my coworkers and I had just a, about a week to figure out how to take what we were doing in person and figure out how to make it somewhat functional in an online setting without you know without a whole lot of technology so what we ended up doing though set a really good um it set a really good precedent for the for the rest of the the uh uh, centers on our campus. So I work for the Learning Center and uh, Academia right now is currently used by our Learning Center and also by our nursing program. Um, but what we were able to do really kind of had a ripple effect for the way the rest of our college was was uh, interacting with students in an online setting and Academia has been a huge part of that. So uh, I, I wanted to kind of highlight what we are using with Academia but also explain some of the features that we're intentionally not using. Um, and it's not because it's not uh, effective, it's because of the, the um, mindset that we had to make sure that we kept as many of our student workers working as possible through the pandemic. And uh, so what we basically did at our learning center, we see students coming in all the time that um, need help with different subjects that are getting assisted by faculty members through workshops, attending tutoring sessions, all of those different things. But a huge part of their experience is interacting with our front desk. Um, as is true with any college campus, any front desk is a place that students will turn to get questions answered. So we wanted to replicate that feel first and foremost before we even got into the academics that we, were, that we exist for. Um, so what we decided to do was utilize Zoom as a new front counter. And I think a lot of colleges are doing this now, too. So even though academia has the ability for students to log themselves in to sessions or to schedule appointments, we chose not to fully lean into that aspect of academia and instead allow everything to continue to flow through our desk assistants, which are, are a good portion of our student workers, um, just so that students coming in would still have a personal experience with someone who wasn't just there to assist them with tutoring, but could also help connect them to other resources and, and do different things like that. So with academia, we have it first and foremost handling tracking, um, tracking of our student students who come in for sessions, but also tracking work hours. Uh, we were really pleased about, I feel like it's been within, within this last six months or so that academia added the tasks feature that allows students to clock in not just for one role initially it was you were either on the clock as a tutor or you were off but there were no other options and now with the tasks feature you can clock into different um different roles so we have desk assistants we have tutoring we have si leaders and so on and different things so that just as the students can clock in uh when they're coming in for services to different roles our, our workers are able to do the same thing. So we, we utilize it a lot for our tracking. Um, and then we also, of course, use it for, for session logging. And again, because we didn't want um, to, you, to lose the impact that our desk assistants have on the tutoring experience, we had to really figure out how to collaborate between our desk assistants and tutors for who was managing things like the session logs. Um, so again, I, I, as I was kind of listening to some of the discussion before this, I realized that there, you know, obviously those of you here are representing things, not just learning centers. Um, it sounds like there's academia is used in a bunch of different um, things. So for us, a lot of what we do focuses around tutoring and logging student activity that way. 
Uh, so we encourage our tutors to go back and edit session logs and add tutor comments and, and things like that, keeping track of the starting and stopping. But the desk assistants are the ones that create those initial logs. So they, we had to really kind of figure out who was going to do what, make sure we were clear on communication that way. Um, I thought I would just show, before we move on to the, to the reporting feature that we use quite a bit, uh, let's see here. It looks like you're going to see my other screen, so I'm going to just drag this over this way. Uh, we, With the whole front counter thing, we use Zoom. I know a lot of uh, people use the GoToMeeting, but um, we try to always have a slideshow revolving in the background when students first come on so that they kind of understand what they're getting ready to be asked. So session logs ask for all the things that you're seeing here. Um, and we try to have the students prepared to give that information so that when they when it is their turn and they're interacting with whoever our desk assistants are, they're able to get signed in quickly. And then we have our tutors in breakout rooms. So every activity that we do are on two main Zoom links rather than having our students. Uh, I know it's possible for, for Zoom to integrate with academia so that you could have a bunch of different Zoom sessions up, but we chose to have it all flowing through two main links, one for a front counter and drop-in tutoring, and one for workshops um, that are faculty-led, just so that we would have that kind of connecting point like a front desk feel again. So we have something like this at all times in the background so that even when our desk assistants are working with others, there's kind of something there that helps them know where they're at. And so far, it's worked really well. Um, I think, like many of you, we, we were just getting used to being back on campus, and then this week we went remote again, at least for now. Hopefully it won't turn into another prolonged season, but it's been really helpful to have these processes ready to go. Now we're all a little bit wiser that things can change quickly, <laughs> so we've learned how to adapt to that. Um, before I move on to the way that we've utilized reporting, did anybody have any questions um, I wish I knew for sure, you know, the different areas that you guys are representing might be helpful, but I'll pause just for a moment while I'm getting up our next section here to see if there are any questions about that. I do think you're going to find, uh, Jana, that most uh, most centers that utilize academia are learning centers, similar to what uh, you're utilizing. I think Diego's College, I know it's mostly fitness centers using academia at the their college's uh, various campuses. Um, I know that you uh, also, you uh, in 2020, you made the switch from AccuSQL to academia. Um, how has that transition been for you? Yeah, all? thank you. Thank you so much for bringing that up. We did. So when we first went online, you know, as was true for everybody, there wasn't a whole lot of time to figure out how we were going to do that. And AccuSQL is a very much site-based platform. It's something that you have to be at your institution to be able to access the information there and do that. So what we had done was we were utilizing Google um, for the whole rest of the spring semester of 2020 to keep our own logs. And then we had uh, to go back and kind of backfill that information into AccuSQL, and it took quite a bit of time. So that was what first got us looking into academia to say we loved AccuSQL because it, it had those different levels of ways to track things, but we needed to be able to access that same platform in a remote uh, environment. There, there, we weren't able to be on campus to do those things. So that's how we first started, and so summer 2020 was the first semester that we used academia. and. Um, we have just been thrilled to see it. You know, once it added tasks, it checked all the boxes that, that AccuSQL had checked and then some, and it gave us the opportunity to really expand. So every semester, I feel like we integrate a little bit more of what academia can do. Um, but, I, you know, anytime you're starting with a new platform, you can't use everything that it has to offer because you're, you're trying to manage transitions, you're trying to do whatever your normal tasks were. So we knew we needed to be able to sign our students in and out and have a way of tracking student utilization to make sure that we knew where those sessions were happening. So that was the very bare bones way that we started summer of 2020. But fast forwarding to now, there are so many other features that we're still looking forward to unpacking and have started to utilize more um, so yeah, AccuSQL uh, was was definitely the gateway for us. We started there and got a lot of utilization out of it, but but have been very happy with switching over over to academia. Good. Um, what are some of the features that you all are looking forward to integrating in the future? Yeah. So you know, once we went back, what, what we were really curious about when we went fully back in person after being online for oh, I don't even know how long it ended up being. I've lost track of all time. But once we went came back to in person, 
we wondered, okay, how are we gonna utilize academia now? Um, and so we we do have a little front center kiosk set up because as, as those of you who use academia know, you can access it from anywhere because it is remote, but we still wanted our student workers passing through kind of that front counter thing that we have such, we have on almost a hundred student workers that are constantly coming and going. So to try to um, have everybody remote as a supervisor, it can be very challenging to know who's where, who's supposed to be where. So that kind of front counter passing point allows us to at least make eye contact and say like, okay, you are where you're supposed to be, or we know where you're supposed to be. Uh, so we have a front uh, kiosk set up for our student workers to clock in and out of, and we only allow them to clock in remotely when they're when they're far enough away from the learning center that it's impractical for them to stop in there first. So if we have some of our tutors on embedded assignments or SI assignments occurring externally on campus, we allow them to clock in from location, but otherwise we prefer for them to do it in-house. Now that we've been in person, we've started realizing that there is a lot of room for um, leaning into appointments. So the appointment scheduling that Academia has. Right now we haven't used it because of um, a lot of our, our in-class assignments have remained online. And so we continue to utilize that one single Zoom link so that we can track activity that way. But as things kind of come back more to a hybrid model or in-person and some remote, we have thought about what are what would that look like to start utilizing more of what academia has to offer. Um, the other things that that I've that, that that would immediately connect to would be the tutor scheduling that is in academia. Right now we don't utilize that because again we wanted all um, scheduling to be happening through our supervising staff just for, for our own purposes, but it is something that we have discussed. So those are the the kind of two big things that we're looking into. Um, any any other uh, questions on that before I move over to our reporting? Any questions for Jana? I think you're good to move on to reporting. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things, so I, I have a data analytics background and I we were talking about um, data connections and all of that right before this, but one of the huge things um, that I know every college has to deal with are things like program reviews or accreditation cycles, different things that are going on. And the access to good data is huge. And so one of the things that I have been the most thankful for with academia is the consistency of reporting that's available. So there are some of those ready-made reports that you can, you can access um, on the reports tab where you can, you know, run, hourly tracking if you're doing payroll, those types of things, but um, the, the larger reports that we've started running by session, I thought I would just show this. So I, I have our data, um, at, at the end of each semester, we export it and we have a Google Data Studio. So that's what you're looking at. This is not officially, you know, this is not connected to academia, but it's being fed by academia data that was available there for us to be able to do different things. So I thought I would just show two kind of sample things of, the reporting that we've been able to run that when it comes to accreditation or program review to have consistency of report formatting um, throughout the semesters it makes it so much easier to feed it into a ready-built platform like this uh, data studio report that i'm showing you here so that we can access historical data easily back and forth and it's the it's the consistency of the formatting on academia side that makes that so doable um, and, you know, most colleges you, you have an IT, not, I'm sorry, not IT, you have a, um, a research, uh, sorry, words are failing me Insti today. Institutional research. Yes, you have institutional <laughs> research that can run these types of reports for you, but for anybody working in those departments, having good quality, easily set up um, CSV files is huge because so much of analytics is reformatting and trying to get it into a thing. So academia makes it easy to be able to build other reports and see things kind of at a quick view. So when we were talking about um, if we had to transition back online this semester, which we ended up having to do just at least for a portion of it, we had to try to reconfigure like when is the best time to do our drop-in hours. So uh, we've only had academia since the summer of 2020. And, and I believe in summer we were, we were using that and also using AccuSQL. But this allowed us, uh, fall 2020 was completely online. So I, I was able to build this report for us to kind of quickly see through the lens of different services when like our peak tutoring hours were, for example, and see that, yeah, for sure, you know, in the afternoons it got bigger, but just having the ability to see multiple years 
um, and run the report for multiple years. And now it's built to where we can add, you know, at the end of, I actually have to re, um, run the fall report from 2021, but being able at the end of the semester to run those reports, add it into something like this and see kind of back and forth, have that data ready um, for everything. It's, it's just been really, really helpful. Uh, so here's another view. It's connected to the same data from AccuSQL. It's the same report that we ran. Um, we're able to look at utilization for each subject area. So if I only wanted to see, you know, for example, what was going on with our biology classes at the point that this report was run, we can go, it's still loading here, but we can go through and see like, okay, SI sessions is where we help students the most. N didn't see as much activity with tutoring. So SI with biology, for example, really was one of our heavy hitters. That was one of the bigger things that we did. Um, so I just wanted to showcase these reports because uh, I, I know AccuSQL also had really good reporting capabilities, but for our institution, it's been huge to be able to have it. It helps us make quick decisions when it when it comes to things rapidly changing due to COVID or due to other things and trying to figure out like where we need more supports. The data that comes from academia has been very helpful for that. Good. Have there been any surprises that have come out of that data? Because I know like a, a course like biology, you know, you can usually like predict that that's going to be like right. pretty popular, but have there been any like big surprises in terms of your popularity yeah, so, of certain services? So to be honest, one of the things that's been the most helpful has been able uh, to see the data this way and then to be able to cross-reference it with data from other platforms. Like we also utilize NetTutor to see like, wait a minute, we offer these services, but all of our students are going over there. And so obviously it's friendly competition when you've got, you know, in-house tutoring and something like that. But it, it for us raised a really good marketing question. Like, are we are we letting students know enough that we have these tutors here and that we've gone they've gone through this training and they're able to assist? So yeah, there's been a lot of different insights that have come from looking at it. Um, on a practical standpoint, when it came to even adjusting our hours of operation, it was really helpful to look back at historical data and say, oh, this is pretty consistently the peak time and this is pretty consistently the dead time. So maybe we adjust our drop in hours and not, you know, so there's there's been a whole lot of uh, considerations that have gone into uh, our program based on the data that we've received. Great. Awesome. That's so I love this. This is very this is very cool looking. Um, does anybody else have any questions about about uh, data uh, for uh, for Jana? Actually, I am surprised and happy at the same time by seeing that uh, you're feeding Data Studio with our CSV files. Um, do, what exactly? I mean, what are the type of reports that you're using? Uh, to, the, to get those USB files, do you know? Yeah, so the, so the main report that, that I used for this, I believe I did the, um, this one was the attendance by services and subject area. Oh, okay. That, um, that is just kind of that big, broad thing. And then on the Data Studio side, I'm able to reorganize it a little bit and make sure I see it in the way that I you know, need to see it, but um, that's that one right there is is a really big one. And uh, Rachel, when you were asking like what else we hope to do, the the student profile that's something that we haven't even explored yet to be able to start looking at that. And it's there, so the information's there. It's just one of those things that we need to um, get on the same page yeah. about how to move forward with using it. Yeah, um, and definitely if you want to start using that, you can reach out to us and we can help you with that. I think it's a really great feature uh, that could give you some more layers of data to work with. And actually, yes. uh, we, we do have the, our traffic analysis, uh, which is a big report with a bunch of, um, actually, I was seeing your mm -hmm. reports uh, with Data Studio, and they kind of look like our traffic analysis. Yeah, and, and I, I actually assumed that some of that data was exactly, coming from the traffic yeah. analysis report. Yeah, I thought that, it was a formatting, yeah. Yeah, the, the, um, the traffic analysis, actually, we have used that before. That was one of the first things we'd used from AccuSQL. What I love about being able to pull the CSV data from it is we were able to make it look like ABC. We were able to use our colors and, and do those kinds of things. And then, you know, kind of customize the view for what our purposes were too. But the traffic analysis is a fantastic report that's available and it already has all the graphs and everything. You don't have to have, you know, data savvy to be able to utilize it. So it, it is really good. So in yeah. your case, what do you do? You get the like periodic reports every every Friday or something like that? Yeah, so, so with that particular report, since it's not something that we need all the time, 
a semester, uh, at the, an end of semester report run is, is fine for our purposes. So obviously it's available at any time that you choose to run it, um, but it's not, it's not a direct feed. So what's happening isn't directly feeding into that. Um, but yeah, I, I try to run it at the end of the semester once we know all of our activities cease for the semester and then import it and, and we're good to go for the, you know, for whatever the next reporting cycle is when they come up. Very nice. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah.